We already started one engine project, so might as well start another. Uh, I'm going to get into this, the 28, 28 cubic inch single cylinder flathead for the uh, SB. This mower is in some desperate need of attention, as you can see. Alright, so before I get into it, I'll just give you a little bit of a history of this. Uh, this mower is probably close to 8-9 years old, um, at least uh, maybe maybe 10. Um, we got a built motor here. This is a 31 cubic inch. Uh, it's a model 28, but it's been re-sleeved to 31. Um, it's got a uh, big cam in it, uh, ARC flywheel, ARC rod, um, stock carb, um, just basically some porting and the brass counterweights, um, high torque starter, uh, obviously for the flywheel. So, you know, it's a decent little motor. Uh, it's just extremely, extremely tired. Uh, it's been beat up a lot. And uh, the last race I was at, the uh, cap actually came off with the oil. So uh, I ran it for at least a heat with no oil. And, uh, yeah, put put uh, more oil in it, and the thing ran strong for the rest of the season. So, uh, I don't know, maybe that's a testament to the uh, synthetic oil. But, all right, we're going to take it off and tear into it and see how, how bad it is inside. these motors are compared to the uh, big ones. Still had a little mishap though. Still had a little mishap. Yeah, I've been into this motor probably um, within the last few years. I had it sleeved at one point and then I just bored it out. Had it, I had it bored out 20 over. So I've been into it a few years ago. Everything should come apart real easy, real smooth. Um, these are flathead single cylinder. There's, I would guess there's probably about, maybe maybe not even half as many parts as, a, uh, as the Intec V-Twin or like a Vanguard V-Twin. So this thing's gonna come apart real quick. I'm just gonna get into it, tear it apart, and then when we get into the inside, I'll show you guys um, what we're seeing in there. I'm not sure what to expect. Okay, so we're inside of it now. Um, it's not as bad as I thought, there's still some slight cross hatching there um, but mostly it's just worn uh, pretty well smooth with scratches up and down the bore um, let's see let's see if I can get another shot the piston uh, when it's at top dead center there is a decent amount of rock to it um, probably not quite as bad as the 44 was but um still not good so yeah, this is already a 20 over piston and 20 over bore, so I think this thing's pretty much at the end of its life. Uh, usually I'm pretty good at, I put all the hardware back in the hole so you don't lose it. Um, this motor's probably not going to go back together. Um, it will in a pinch if I have to. I'm going to keep the piston and the bore around, um, you know, keep the bore from getting rusty and stuff. Just in case. I mean, the motor ran halfway decent last time I ran it, so it's definitely something I'm going to keep as a, as a spare in case I blow a primary motor. Um, I'm gonna take this valve cover off. I want to. I'm interested to see what kind of valve lash we have if it opened up a lot um, over the over the cycle of a couple seasons or whatever it was since I last lashed it. And then I'll uh, take the flywheel off and uh, we'll get inside and see what's going on in there. So the exhaust we got opened up to 13 thousandths. The intake is about uh, we're the seven the seven thousandths just about slides in. So, um, yeah, it definitely opened up a little bit, you know, uh, it's probably about four thousandths more on each, on each than it should be, but, um, that, that's not outrageous, you know, uh, but yeah, you know, definitely a new motor, you don't set it that loose. things I'd like to mention before I try to pull this flywheel off. One, I always take the nut and I always put it down a couple threads. All you need is for the hub to pop, you know, but um, 
If you don't have this nut on, and I've seen it, you'll pop the hub and the whole thing will come right off uh, and, and actually fly, I've seen it fly almost a foot up into the air and then you gotta catch it and that's no fun. And another thing, uh, another tip that I just thought of that I'm gonna start doing I think in practice is you know, since we're racing these on, on uh, dirt, you know, as lawnmower racers and a lot of the dirt cart guys too, is I think I'm going to get some set screws and I'm going to put set screws in these holes that I use as a puller in the hub because they get all filled up with dirt and your threads are binding up and it's just not a good situation. So uh, I think I'm going to put some uh, set screws in there after I uh, assemble this motor back together on, uh, on both my motors actually. Yeah, as you can see, that uh, that popped pretty good. So uh, no question that thing would have gone up in the air. And we're inside. Uh, this is what it looks like inside of a uh, Briggs 28. Um, again, this is a you know this is a somewhat race motor. Uh, it's got the brass counterweights instead of the uh, big heavy uh, cast iron. Um, weights it came with. They came with weights that moved on an eccentric. Uh, that's gone. Uh, also I got a uh, little needle roller bearing here. Uh, that's an addition. Um, here's the other end of it. The other side of it. Um, that's just to uh, alleviate the weight from sitting on the bottom of the pan and uh, sometimes they wanted to uh, eat into the uh, the brass on top. Uh, the brass counterweight, the one on top as well and I, um, I'll i show you later. I installed just one of these spacers in there to prevent that from happening. Uh, it's a big cam, aftermarket cam. Uh, you can see the ARC rod back in there. And um, pan's full of nasty, nasty stuff. Uh, it's pretty it's pretty bad. It's like ink. Um, it's definitely got a decent amount of metallic to it. Um, which is uh, to be expected since this motor ran completely out of oil. So I'm going to take all these parts out, inspect them, and uh, see what we got. Alright, we got the piston out. Um, it's worn, you know, as expected. Um, it's not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. Um, and neither is the uh, main crank journal or even the bearings on the uh, rods. Everything is in pretty good shape, very smooth. Um, I put the uh, top piston ring in and uh, as you can see there's a gap. Uh, it's only measuring about 23 thousandths. So, um, you know, this motor is not that bad. It's not nearly as bad as I thought it'd be. I thought it'd be a lot more whooped. Um, it always smoked a little on uh, warm up, and then once it got warm, it uh, seemed to tighten up and get a lot better. But um, yeah, definitely going to keep this block. Definitely going to keep the piston as uh, as a good solid backup uh, if need be. But um, as you can see, I got the copper head gasket on here still. You know, definitely going to go with a new engine though, which uh, we got a couple of. So we're going to have them built up. Okay, and here's my two uh, project motors. One of these will probably be uh, used for Paul's build, maybe not. Um, but I'm going to strip them down, make sure they're all good to go. I think this one's seized right up here on the left. I think it's seized right up, but uh, it's going to be re-sleeved and everything. Um, another thing I noticed is that this motor here has the nut on the crankshaft holding the flywheel on, and this one has the bolt. Um, the nuts are good because they're this type of crankshaft, and they have the... Uh, they're removable eccentric, so you can just slide these brass weights right on, no machining necessary. One more thing I want to show you guys about these engines um, is the difference in heads. This is a smaller head. This is like a 10 and a half, 11 horse head. This is like a 12 or 13 horse head. A um, lot more volume in these ones, a lot bigger. Uh, they both ramp up, but this one has a lot more open area in here whereas this one's closed in. Um, one thing I'll have to do probably on either head is get some room for the valves, both radial clearance and uh, as well as just make these a little bit taller because um, this high lift cam is going to be pushing these heads right off the engine if I don't. So that's going to do it for these engines for now. Um, this one and the V-twin. Uh, pretty much I ordered a bunch of parts. I ordered a piston for the uh, flathead. I ordered two pistons or uh, 20 over for the, uh, the Intech and ordered a bunch of other parts for the Intech. So uh, 
waiting on parts and then going to be sending them off to the engine builder. So you might not be seeing these motors for a little while, but um, definitely keep you guys updated if there's anything going on with them. And then for sure when I do the rebuilds, when I start cleaning up the heads, porting it, prepping the other 28 inch block, uh, we'll be showing all that stuff too. So until next time, I'll be cleaning up this mess here and uh, we'll catch you guys in Jam Journal.